So I'm very happy to be here and present my work on hydrogen technologies for living devices. So it's a collaborative work with uh, uh, LuLab and JOLab. And also, as people has just discussed, uh, the technologies uh, enabled by, uh, uh, the synthetic biology has enabled a variety of important applications, including the position therapeutics, smart materials, agriculture and food and the environment monitoring and redimitation. So, however, there are a few challenges in, uh, that limit the wide use in the real world applications of those uh, synthetic biology. The first issue is the safety problem. The gene pollution where happens when the bacteria or genetic engineer organisms release the escape from the original places and it will cause gene, may probably cause gene transfer. So another problem is that we, the bacteria usually have very short life, lifespan. They cannot survive for a long, very long time in, with the limited nutrient resources. How can we pre, uh, maintain the viability and functionality of the, those bacteria? And uh, the last question is, we really hope to have better regulation or better control over the, those cells, including their distribution and their behaviors. So uh, to motivate, motivate, we motivated by those uh, challenges, my research is to harness the uh, hydrogen technologies to interface the uh, living bacteria with the human body. Uh, the hydrogens are the polymer networks infiltrated with water and uh, they are compatible to host the bacteria. Advanced uh, fun uh, manufacturing methods including the cell encapsulation and uh, 3D printing and as well as some um, modeling and therapeutic analysis we have used to uh, create a few uh, living devices and materials. So the first one we are able to propose is the hydrogen elastomer hybrid that to, we, we try to maintain the safety and the viability of the bacteria. Those, this device is composed of two components, uh, three components, with the hydrogen side exposed to uh, as the upper side, and the, and the hydrogen is able to supply the nutrient and water to the cell chambers in between. And the elastomer at the bottom side is air permeable, can supply the oxygen to the cell chambers. And also the adhesion between the hydrogen and elastomer prevent any leakage from the cell chambers to the environment, even under the large deformations like the stretching and the twisting. So we, uh, with those prototypes we have just shown, we are also able to use them for some practical applications. For example, we make them into a wearable skin patch. The skin patch attached to the forearm skin and they can detect the chem biomarkers released by the skin. Another example is uh, wearable living uh, gloves. We laminate a layer of living sensors on top of the fingertip of a elastomeric glove and the, from the, sorry, from the fingertip, for instance, at the fingertip, we can see what, we can tell what substance, chemical substances contained in the stuff you just grabbed or took. So we have kind of solved, uh, some, to some degree, we solved the problem in the safety and uh, the viability functionality issues. And can we also use those hydrogen matrix to regulate the cell population and interactions? The short answer is yes. There are, we have two methods, including the mechanical and structural regulation. The first one is that we use the hydrogen mechanical properties as a control parameters. We know that we, can, we are able to visualize the life cells and death cells in the hydrogen matrix. The uh, with uh, life that stand, the, usually the uh, life cells are stand with green color and the dead cells are the red. So over time we can see that the uh, viability 
in uh, cell variability in the hydrogen matrix. Also, we find that with the increased uh, mechanical modulus, the hydrogen tends to have shorter lifespans. So uh, that this information gives us the, the ability to manipulate the bacterial variability and the responsiveness by regulating the mechanical modulus of the hydrogen matrix. So therefore, we can fabricate a hydrogen strip with gradient modulus. That is, the bacterial cells at the softer part is able to be responsive to the environment for a relatively longer time, whereas the stiffer part will be responsive to the environment for like only one day or even less. So from the sensing result, we can also uh, get to know, not, get, not only get to know whether there is an input, but also where, when and where the input signal is, was received, which is also very beneficial for the environmental monitoring and the disease diagnosis. Uh, besides those bulk encapsulation, we are also able to create some uh, microstructures based on the living materials. We create them uh, by printing the hydrogen matrix together with the living engineered bacteria cells. Different hydrogen composition and different bacteria cell types in the printing ink can be organized into a single 3D architectures. So we also show that we are able to print large-scale multi-materials, and there are a variety of uh, hydrogen structures printed, the, including the overhanging structures and some multi-ink printing. The overall macro-scale dimension can reach three centimeters, where the spatial resolution can go down as low as 30 micron. And we are also able to predict what happens over time in the hydrogen matrix, uh, in the 3D printed living structures. We, by considering the chemical diffusion and the cell induction in these printed structures in both 1D and 2D. The thing we are, uh, the application we are trying to achieve is similar to what uh, Katia just uh, shown, that we print a living tattoo on the skin and they are able to detect what happened on your skin uh, with very high spatial resolution. This structure is this, this one is relatively straightforward, but we are able to create more complicated geometry and the computation capability. So for future, uh, we, uh, so currently we have kind of solved the problem in terms of uh, safety, longevity, and the uh, regulation. For, for the future, we probably can also, in, we, are envision, we envision that we can in, incorporate some other signals, including optical, magnetic, and mechanical signals into a system, other than the chemical signals we currently presented. And also, besides the wearable devices we, are just sh show, we just shown, we can also have other options uh, of working spaces between the human and the bacteria, for example, the blood vessels, GI check, and thank you for listening, thanks.